Welcome to the Prime Strength YouTube channel. As always, Brendan Teets, owner and head coach here at Prime Strength. And guys, I hit a crazy high bar squat PR, and I did it at our P6. So I'm going to show you guys this awesome PR. We're also going to be talking about today movement variability. Once again, this is going to be a really uh, common theme on my channel moving forward because I've really been on a hype, and it's helped out my training so much. And I want to discuss today about how training extreme end ranges of position and function can make you healthier. And I did these very heel elevated knee forward plat squats to really cure some uh, knee pain I was dealing with. And I want to talk about the importance of training capacity at specific tissue sites in order to make your joints and ligaments a lot more resilient. So we'll be discussing that in a bit. Uh, but starting off, we're going to talk about these high bar squats here. I was warming up and man, do I feel fatigued, but I was still able to get uh, some really good movement in and it led to a very solid top set where I hit a nice PR and I did it at RP six. Now for me, RP six is actually still a pretty decently heavy lift for a beginner who's not very advanced. It's not going to be a very taxing set, but man, this workout was a hard one. I'm going to take you guys through everything. We did a lot of fun stuff in this workout and um, I'm really focused on a few main things as we transition to the heavy portion of this training cycle being about five, six weeks out from this powerlifting meet. What I'm really focused on is really high output on my main big three. So the squats, the bench, the deadlifts, or the close variations of those. And then I'm also focused on hypertrophy work, although limiting it a little bit more as we get closer to the meet. And then lastly, a lot of function work. So trying to make sure I'm staying healthy, in good position and training end range positions, uh, mobility and stability, which again, we'll be talking about later with those extremely heel elevated squats I did. That was my uh, last warm up set, took a really big jump here. I had ascending sets of seven on the high bar squat, really turned it on for this. Now, my best set of five ever on the high bar squat was 507 pounds. I did this 485 for seven, and it was a lot easier than that 507 was. So. I actually think I could best my all-time high bar PR both on a one rep max and for reps here if I really wanted to. But the program called for RP6, so I banged these reps out. I felt like everything was really solid there. I was hitting the hole nice and smooth, catching a rebound, not getting too bent over, especially for a high bar squat on a high fatigue day. This is my secondary day, so fatigue's a lot higher. Good movement is harder to come by when my fatigue's high. And on top of that, I'm pretty deep into my macros for the week, meaning that I've been in a deficit for a good amount of days by the time I've got into this workout. As where my heaviest workout, my SPD day, I actually align my macros to have a refeed for one to two days before that day to feel a lot better. Now after that, I hit up some uh, Romanian deadlifts as always, really focused on a powerful hip hinge, and again, hit a nice little PR here. I actually ended up hitting 415 pounds uh, for a nice set of six, I believe it was. And the form really ha held up here. I was really happy with how I was performing this hip hinge. And I feel like this is going to have a lot of carryover to my heavy deadlifts. And I actually might keep these in all the way to my powerlifting meet. I'm going to talk to my coach about it. I do have a coach I utilize whenever I'm preparing for meet because it helps remove that subjectivity and that bias that I might have, especially when I'm under a lot of fatigue and I might end up doing something stupid. So I'm going to talk to Dylan, my coach, and see if we can actually keep these all in. Usually I get a little bit more specific for a meet, um, but I actually have been really just loving training variations like RDLs and other things, which again, <laughs> that has been the common theme on this channel. Now, after this, moving on to some leg curls here, uh, really focus on short rest periods here. So I am still incorporating a lot of hypertrophy work, but as I get closer to a meet, you'll notice I go really high volume, but like shorter rest period to limit load. So just 25 pounds there, I had three, or no, I actually had five sets of 10 on this day, five sets of 10 to 12 reps, and I was doing it uh, with 30 seconds rest period. And then after I had three sets of long pause, very knee forward, very heel elevated. This is about a four to five inch elevation if you include my squat heel, uh, plat squats. So you look at the knee position and what I'm really focused on here is spending some time in end range, really jamming those knees way past my toes and working on resiliency, and capacity building in those tissues. My knees were really achy and were feeling kind of like glass, especially after that high bar squat. And this actually made them feel better. 
Now, first off, what this will do is allow a lot of blood flow to the localized area. And what that's going to do is uh, have a lot of signaling with growth factors and various things that are going to produce really healthy effects at the knee joint. The second thing is we're actually working on a tempo, which scientific literature has shown that tempos, especially on tendons and at the joint site, uh, can really help produce some favorable results with um, you know, curing tendinopathies and other issues that arise from heavy lifting. And then lastly, you're actually just basically limiting your load by positional strength. So I'm going to get a lot of end range stability and mobility work while also going to um, you know, a position that I'm kind of limited in, which is dorsiflexion for me and knee positioning, which will then have carryover to my squat by increasing dorsiflexion, you know, mobility as well as stability to really get some good uh, results there. I was doing some calf raises there. Uh, I did those with a bent knee on purpose in case anyone's wondering. That's a video for another time. And then finished up here with some GHR sit-ups. Actually, this isn't the end. Uh, I was doing these GHR sit-ups though, kind of altering the resistance curve by moving the dumbbell over my head at the top. So I got a very smooth uh, force curve here where I match the resistance curve and the strength curves really well by maneuvering this dumbbell. It has to do with, uh, you know, just basic physics, where gravity is going to peak at uh, in relation to my body, as well as how I'm maneuvering that dumbbell to increase or decrease the moment arm. Uh, again, that'll probably be a video for another time just because I don't have enough video footage to cover what I'm doing there. But I am doing that on purpose in order to play with that force curve. And then lastly, finishing up here with my grip work. So I'm always doing some heavy uh, axle bar deadlifts in a very comp specific way. So I do a set of five followed by a long hold. Then due to the diameter of the bar, this really taxes the grip, obviously, before the posterior chain. So it's a great way to make the grip the limiting factor and ensure I'm still progressing uh, my grip strength, which has been a problem for my deadlift in the past. But I also like to make sure I'm not just doing long holds and I get some reps in because I feel that's a little bit more specific. So I do just basically, basically ascending sets of five and then a long hold after until my grip just feels like it gives out. And that's pretty much everything for this workout. So a whole lower body hypertrophy day really focusing on you know some weak points some movement variabilities as well as just getting in some really heavy volume on slight variations of the big three and then i got the heavy sbd day coming on the weekend session in a few days after this and that's pretty much the video guys if you have any questions comments concerns leave it down below in the comment section and i'll catch you guys in the next one